I know, right? <laughs> oh, hello. Welcome to the Devilishly Good Time Museum. Location, hell. My name is Shanspeare, and I will be your torture guide this evening. Uh, what's a bad name for you? Ah, I see you've booked with us today our pop culture bundle, which includes a guided tour and a chance to curse your least favorite politician, not naming any names, Ron DeSantis. All right, uh, that'll be $10. Are you paying with debit or credit today? <laughs> oh, honey, we don't take souls. That won't pay the bills. <laughs> Uh, excuse me for a second. <sighs> this bubbling pot has been going off all day. This is where our satanic contracts come in for final approval. By me, of course. <laughs> Let's see who we have next. <sighs> hmm. That can't be right. Um, give me a second. I'm going to call my evil secretary real quick. We'll get to your tour in a second. Stop being such an American. Oh, hey, Sally. Uh, yeah, I'm checking in a client and I got a fax saying that Doja Cat is going to be our next inductee. I was just wondering if that was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. The concerts are going to be insane. I really hate to be the loser who'll be missing out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I will let these kind people know. <laughs> All right. See you, Sally. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so your tour has actually gone up in price. Yeah, we have a new inductee coming in straight from Hollywood, and you'll be the first to meet her. I am also eternally damned to tell you that your tour also comes with other fiery amenities, like our sponsor, Toon Blast. I'll tell you all about it while I ring you up for a totally normal and not at all price gouging charge for your tour. <laughs> so. Toon Blast is a free-to-play mobile game with over 7,000 levels. That's almost as many layers as we have here in the underworld, but we have less rewards. As you advance through the puzzles, you're essentially helping a cast of cute characters, the Toon Gang, travel around magical worlds. And I may be a mistress of the dark, but I do love cute things. And believe it or not, I also really love group shenanigans. Me and the other demons, <laughs> we have some stories that I cannot tell you at this time, but Toon Blast allows you to join teams or compete against players around the world, giving you a challenging yet fulfilling experience with others. There are even mini games included where you can win rewards. You may be thinking, this sounds great, but how am I supposed to play this game down here in the depths of the underworld? I'd give you our super secure and hard to guess Wi-Fi password, which is not just AG double hockey sticks, but you don't need it. You can play Toon Blast without Wi-Fi, allowing you to take it just about anywhere. I love to play Toon Blast here on my breaks at work. The visuals are engaging, the storyline is captivating, and the game itself is very easy to learn. Not to mention, if you love chaos like I do, you'll absolutely love this gameplay. I'm on level 39 right now and I will only keep climbing. Think you could beat me? Well, then make sure to join millions who have already downloaded Toon Blast and who have left stellar ratings for it. You can download Toon Blast now by using the link in my description and receive three hours of unlimited lives and 100 free coins. Ah, look at that. I'm all done ringing you up. Don't bother reading the receipt, nothing is itemized. Hope you have a good time with Toon Blast, but we have a tour to get to. In May of 1988, the small city of Jamestown, New York, was experiencing hell on earth. People reported sightings of mutilated bodies, both human and animal. Rumors circulated that teenagers were going to be beat up after school. In turn, they armed themselves and took to the street in defense. At one point, there was even a rumor that a young, blonde, blue-eyed virgin would be kidnapped in the night and sacrificed to the devil. At least I'm safe. <laughs> but it seemed that overnight, Jamestown was completely overtaken by an infection. A mortal there, Jeffrey Victor, was directly affected by this panic. He was a resident of the small New York town, and his son, only a child, got caught up in the frenzy. The child would receive phone calls all through the night. Phone calls that threatened him, that accused him of dark things. His father, Jeffrey, was petrified. What had caused his small town to awaken with such vengeance? 
unbeknownst to Jeffrey at the time, the same issue was sweeping through the entirety of the United States. Soon, it would know no borders, no oceanic margins. The 80s and 90s were ripe with this fear. This fear that a secret, ever powerful cult was stealing youth and slaughtering innocents. The circumstances surrounding this worldwide panic pointed to demonic activity. And I admit, you mortals are quite weak to possession. <laughs> Frightened, the media began calling it a satanic panic. It became cemented in 1983 when workers at McMartin Preschool in California were accused and tried for ritual abuse. A child enrolled at the preschool was sitting upon the toilet one day, doubled over in pain from a bowel movement. And his mother became paranoid. She had concluded from her son's pain that he had been abused. This abuse was not only carried out by her estranged husband, but by someone at the McMartin preschool. This accusation caused a frenzy, one that history does not look upon with kindness. After the accusation, the police sent a letter to 200 parents with children enrolled at McMartin, and a fragment of the letter read, Dear parent, this department is conducting a criminal investigation involving child Please question your child to see if he or she has been a witness to any crime or if he or she has been a victim. Please do not discuss this investigation with anyone outside of your immediate family. So, how do you think this went? I'll give you six, six, six seconds to come up with your answer. Badly. It went badly. Over 300 children were involved in the initial accusations. The number, upon the start of the trial, dwindled to 41. Experts reviewed the interview tapes of these children and concluded that the detectives involved used improper, coercive, directive, problematic, and adult-directed techniques in a way that forced the children to follow a rigid script. And then came the so-called bizarre accusations. Children were alleging that witches were flying throughout the daycare during business hours. A parent accused one of the defendants of knowing how to fly. One kid even picked Chuck Norris out of a lineup when asked who was abusing them. Eventually, the public lost faith in the credibility of the case. It was closed and the abuser set free. But the fear this initial panic instilled never quite died down that mortal Jeffrey Victor called these fears of satanic cults chronic anxiety, meaning they don't go away, they're everlasting. The concept of some secret satanic group stealing children, drinking blood, and wearing dark robes. This fear is older than you, your parents, their parents, and so forth. Funny enough, you humans also have a way of invoking this fear at times of tension, political, racial, economic, you name it. And this is especially true when there is an easily accessible scapegoat to pair with it. For instance, when 71% of Rome was destroyed by a fire in 64 AD, Emperor Nero blamed Christians, who were already unpopular amongst the crowd. They were often accused of stealing children and using their blood for satanic sacrifices. In the Middle Ages, Christians turned the blame to Jewish people, accusing them of butchering young Christian kids and using them for rituals. In fact, if we were to trace the history of satanic panics from ancient times until now, Jewish people are almost constantly the target of these conspiracy theories. The fear that a secret society whose ever-present power and eliteness allows them to control the entire world is often linked to anti-Semitism, which can lead to disproportionate and unwarranted violence aimed at the Jewish community. Think of the NWO, the Illuminati, or even QAnon. How strange is it that something so outlandish like these theories can simultaneously be submerged in very real hatred used to further selfish agendas. I'm sensing a future pattern. When the mortal Jeffrey Victor began investigating the satanic panic taking over his town in the 1980s, he came across an explanation commonly used for such infections, and that is mass hysteria. 
I remember it like it was yesterday. The dancing plagues of 1518. The Salem witch trials of the 1600s. Bloody, fiery, hellish good times. <laughs> During mass hysterias, critical thinking skills are dampened. A group of people share a temporarily pathological emotional state where emotion shapes cognition. That's what Jeffrey Victor concluded. But mass hysteria doesn't explain the religious aspect or the subcultural aspect or even the geographical aspect. How can the entire world be undertaken by this infection at the same time for the same reasons? We demons aren't that strong. It turns out that the satanic panic and other moral panics just like it is about being human. Hard news, harder times. These are the circumstances that breed the perfect ground for chaos and I love chaos. Jeffrey argues that rumors and rumor-led panics are the mortal's response to the strange and unusual. You are unsure of your future. You are heavily dependent on your past. And so you hold tightly to it in fear of change. Religion, the nuclear family, the gentle times before TikTok superstars and devilish music. You try to explain the unexplainable in times where authority figures, your politicians, your governors, your presidents are distinctly untrustworthy. When people lose faith in their authorities, they will regard bizarre and frightening rumor stories as plausible, such as those about satanic cults, because it might seem dangerous to simply disregard them. Legends are a coping mechanism, a comfort in the time of the bazaar. And aren't you mortals going through something absolutely freakish? I mean, your politicians are corrupt. Your police are gratuitously violent. Your groceries are expensive. Your rent is outrageous. You can't pay your bills. You can't clothe your children. And yet there's a sector of mortals much more prosperous than you, celebrities, presidents, people in power who look down upon your own poverty and offer you thoughts and prayers, but never salvation. You are experiencing, as Jeffrey wrote it, a deep cultural crisis of values coming after a period of very rapid social change. It looks like you're in due time for another satanic panic. And I say to you, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Hollywood is the perfect breeding ground for moral panics. It has uncertainty, it has unconventional fashion, and it has an endless sea of hopeful creatives trying and sometimes failing to set themselves apart. There's the mortal Sam Smith, who caused an uproar during their 2023 Grammy performance, featuring Kim Petras. Both Sam and Kim got a perfect score of serving cunt with a side of mothertude. But your pesky conservatives didn't like their performance much. It was defined as a devilishly provocative, satanic, evil ritual that made Republicans want to throw up. I thought it was fun. But before Sam and Kim came Lil Nas X, who kickstarted your pathetic little planet with the release of his Montero music video. It featured him giving a lap dance to the devil, poles sliding down into hell, and again, serving absolute devilish cunt. My friends and I watched it 18 million times. No exaggeration. It gave us new ideas on how to make an entrance at work. But the BET Awards allegedly asked him if he was a Satanist because of it, and people worldwide called for his cancellation. He's not alone. There is a history of gender non-conforming and otherwise queer people being accused of worshiping Satan. And this history stretches back centuries. 
What people don't understand when they campaign against Sam Smith, Kim Petras, Lil Nas X, and other queer and trans people accused of Satanism is the fact that they're simply reclaiming threats they faced their whole lives. For centuries, LGBTQI people have been told, directly and indirectly, that their mere existence is enough to get them a first-class ticket to hell. How do you think that feels? Sitting in the church pews as a child, being told that you can pray away something integral to your soul. So you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and nothing changes within you, except maybe your capacity to love yourself. And it's not just queer and trans celebrities facing this hardship. It's the non-binary teenager stuck in your dreaded Florida state, dying for gender-affirming care, struggling to pay their bills, hoping for a way out that won't be given to them by a so-called religious man. It's the 70-year-old trans woman in Texas who just started living her life, completely free, only to be beaten back underground by her community. These people see your campaigns against them. They see your calls of grooming and brainwashing. They stare at the version of themselves that you've constructed, false versions, and they internalize it. They see your cries for them to go to hell, and they do it willingly, in style. The issue here is not religion. Even I am open-minded enough to see that religion can heal. There are people who are comforted by religion, who are spurred by it, who use it as a path to help and restore peace to others. The problem instead is falsifying religion and using it for your own selfish gain. The Bible does not speak about campaigning for total annihilation of trans, queer, poor, impoverished, unhoused, disabled people, or people of color. It says, truly I tell you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. No one can serve two masters. You will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This fear that there's a group of elites controlling your earth for their own financial gain? That's real. But it's not who you think it is. It's not your black grocer. It's not your Jewish neighbor. It's not your trans student. It's the ones who line their pockets with the blood that comes from targeting these people. It's these actual blood-sucking elites usually right-wing pundits and big tech corps who peddle sensationalist narratives to distract us from the actual problems at hand, which they are responsible for. Karl Marx even spoke of them, saying, the vampire will not lose its hold so long as there is muscle, a nerve, a drop of blood to be exploited. The point, this new age satanic panic the one that targets LGBTs and otherwise non-conforming individuals has nothing to do with religion and everything to do with reinforcement. Besides reinforcing white, heterosexual, cis supremacy, it's also about reinforcing tradition, even down to aesthetics. Let's take Doja Cat, for example, shall we mortal? She is the latest celebrity to get washed up in this wave of panic. From her blood red crystal ensemble at Paris Fashion Week, to her so-called demonic dazed cover, even to her haircut, tattoos, and music. Everything Doja Cat does is tainted ever so lightly by accusations of dark energy, but it kind of works out. It makes me like her even more. Except for all the boyfriend allegation stuff, that's weird and strange, even for me. Truthfully, I'm not here to talk about those allegations. They have a place of their own, forever cemented on other parts of your internet. If those allegations are true, the backlash she's receiving may be appropriate, but it is for certain that these comments under numerous posts of her Instagram have nothing to do with her boyfriend and everything to do with Doja Cat's current aesthetic. 
The mortal public seem to think that Doja is the latest inductee in a long line of famous Illuminati members. The modern Illuminati is thought to be a secret society, much like those dreaded satanic cultists who control the world with their money and power. People have accused numerous stars of being in the Illuminati. After years of being accused of having connections to it, for instance, Beyonce came forward with a devilishly appropriate lyric condemning the chatter. Madonna even once wrote a song featuring the word Illuminati in its lyrics, yet quickly denounced any relation to the secret society. From a demonic view, it Seems that your immortal celebrities find the existence of, let alone their membership in, some dark fantastical society quite silly. But Doja Cat approaches it differently. She has all the zest of an unbothered human child experiencing Twitter for the first time, where it can troll millennials with grace and ease. She posts consistent images on her Instagram that have pearl clutching mortals in a twist. There are silly animated images of her with a shrunken head and 2012-esque Tumblr PNGs. There's thirst traps superimposed over weird food items. There's unpolished, slightly comical 0.5 zoom images of her forehead. And you can't forget the blood-soaked aesthetic of her new music. All of it has led the public to call out Doja Cat, other more valid criticisms aside, and declare her the newest inductee of the Illuminati. They believe she's undergoing a humiliation ritual in return for her rise to eternal fame. Really makes you think what's humiliating about having a shaved head, but maybe that's a conversation for a different tour. Speaking of, what kind of torture guide would I be if I didn't give you a little homework? I ask you, what are the impacts of these accusations? Is Satanism really plaguing your pathetic human society? And if not, what does the internet's fear of non-conformity mean for the lifeblood of the only thing you mortals have going for you? Your ability to create art. Let's first start with this mystical Illuminati. Though accused of having ties to my world, the Illuminati was actually created in yours and as far as I know, had no ties to Satanism during its reign. The closest to hell it got was that it was created eerily close to the founding of what you humans call the United States of America. Now that's a bad omen. The Illuminati was born from Adam Weishpot, a professor at the University of Ingolstadt in the late 1700s. Adam was the only non-clerical professor there, meaning that he was the only one who was not a religious leader or priest. Over time, Adam became anti-clerical entirely and sought to spread enlightenment across his campus. And that he did by creating a secret society of law students who learned the word of rationalism. In 1778, the society came to be known as the Order of the Illuminati, adapted from the Latin root illuminatus, meaning enlightened. Adam's group was quite small and almost entirely dependent upon espionage. It sounds a lot cooler than I assume it was. After all, Adam was referred to as Brother Spartacus across campus. Not cool at all. Within his first year, the membership grew from 12 to 27. These mortals were often Christians of good character, their words, not mine, and were usually rich, docile, curious, and young. Jewish people and pagans were strictly forbidden from joining, as were women, monks, and people tied to other secret societies. To this day, no one knows the true intentions of the Illuminati. Some mortal scholars claim it was created to promote equality and freedom in their community, which is easily debatable, while others claim that the Illuminati's purpose was to promote rationalism as an alternative to religion. Whatever the case, it doesn't matter, does it? The Illuminati grew greedy and unorganized and were outed amongst their people. The names of high-ranking officials were leaked and the public became unsettled by their presence. They were banned by the 1780s, barely a couple of years after their inception, and Adam fled Bavaria for good. None of this happened in your little United States, by the way. 
but word soon spread to that cursed country, infecting it with the same fear held by the mortals in Bavaria. Lasting discourse on your planet accuses the Illuminati of controlling places of power, from Hollywood to the presidency. The internet has only allowed this frenzy to spiral and corrupt an even bigger, ever more expansive demographic. What was once an infection of small towns, far-right conspiracy theories, and old white people is now a plague among us all. I blame the Shade Room. An interesting element to this new satanic panic is how much Satanism actually doesn't apply. Doja Cat, for instance, is certainly not a Satanist. At least, her trolling doesn't make her one. It's more so that people don't want to fuck her anymore, and so that must mean there's something wrong with her. Her dark clothing, her non-traditional aesthetics, for thousands and thousands of tiny red rhinestones. It's a sign of rejection, and rejecting them and their desires is akin to blasphemy. It's the same infection that plagued earlier satanic panics. People who wore too much black or listened to too much metal were accused of being vicious murderers hell-bent on stealing away your children. Just as the OG satanic panic had people condemning goths for stepping outside of the traditional narratives, the current targets of these devilish conspiracy theories are just people going against whatever traditionalists think is acceptable. And usually, it's just people trying to be edgy. So what happens when the mortals on your tiny little planet buy into this nonsense? When they cheer on political talking points disguised as saving the children from corruption? When they brush off their neighbor who plots on harming those evil, eyeshadow-wearing gays? when people correlate outrageous or non-conventional fashion to drinking the blood of innocence. You don't need me to speculate. Turn on the news. But I will humor you on another topic. What will happen to your capacity to create? Your mortal conservatives seem to like a book from your planet, 1984. There's a quote there that I like. If you want a picture of the future, Imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. You'll find yourself quieted by censorship, where anything considered non-traditional, non-Christian, non-heterosexual, non-cis, and non-white are stamped into the ground by the boot of conformity. Didn't I tell you that these moral panics have agendas? If Doja Cat is a Satanist for dressing differently or making edgy art, or posting silly images on her Instagram, weird boyfriend be damned, I'm not talking about him, then what does that mean for the health of all artists? Especially the ones without the money and notoriety to back them up, because let's be very honest here, Doja Cat will come out of this controversy just fine. She already has. But what does it mean for you, you mortals? Everything is perfect and nothing is beautiful with you. You've forgotten what it means to create something ugly on purpose. Things that make you cringe back in horror or embarrassment or shame are the things that are most important. But you don't get it. Blood and guts and weird pop tarts with cheese melted on them, hidden in the background of a Pixar edited thirst trap, is the only thing that will get you through this miserable existence. But you want airbrushed, you want pop, you want creatives to be digestible for you. You want heaven, and you want to turn your nose down at hell, when that's an integral element of nuanced creation. What happens when people start creating the same thing all the time? No pushed boundaries, no art with edges, no David Bowie, no Michael Jackson, no Frida Kahlo. Just a lifetime of safe, traditional, digestible art. Think you could survive that? Let's see. I hope you enjoyed your tour, mortal. That'll be $500 million but at least you can get Toon Blast for free. Remember to download Toon Blast now by using the link in my description and receive three hours of unlimited lives and 100 free coins. I'll see you next time, somewhere else on your internet. Bye for now.